It was 1916. With its chalky soil, the Somme's terrain proved difficult for digging trenches, and the heavy bombardment turned the landscape into a cratered wasteland, complicating movement and communication. Once a symbol of pastoral beauty, this landscape had transformed into a desolate mud and barbed wire tableau, a stark embodiment of military stalemate. The war of movement had ceased, giving way to the grim reality of trench warfare, where each attempt at an offensive breakthrough was met with costly resistance, making gains both minimal and fleeting. This deadlock, a brutal testament to the war's scale and ferocity, set the stage for one of the most harrowing chapters in military history. The Battle of the Somme unfolded against the backdrop of World War I, deeply entrenched along the Western Front, a formidable barrier stretching from the North Sea to the Swiss border. Here, the Allied forces, mainly British and French, confronted the Central Powers led by Germany, entrenched in a sprawling network of trenches and fortifications. After two years of this deadlock, both sides were desperate for a strategic breakthrough. The Allies, in particular, were under pressure to alter the course of the war. The German offensive at Verdun, initiated in February 1916, was designed to bleed France white by targeting a symbol of French national pride and forcing the French to commit as many troops as possible to its defense at a terrible cost. As the battle at Verdun dragged on, it consumed French resources and morale, bringing the French army to the brink of collapse. This necessitated a diversion and relief, which the Somme was intended to provide. The selection of the Somme as the battlefield was strategic for several reasons. It was located within reach of the British sector of the Western Front, enabling the British Expeditionary Force BEF, to assume a leading role. At the same time, the French army was heavily engaged at Verdun. The terrain, although challenging, was deemed suitable for a large-scale offensive. Furthermore, the area was less fortified than other sections of the front, offering a glimmer of hope for a breakthrough. The primary Allied objective was to relieve the German pressure on Verdun by launching a significant offensive elsewhere, forcing the Germans to divert forces from Verdun to the Somme. This would accomplish two things, alleviate the strain on the French troops and potentially create opportunities for a breakthrough that could change the dynamics of the war on the Western Front. Additionally, there was hope of inflicting heavy casualties on the German forces. Allied commanders believed that a massive, concentrated artillery bombardment followed by a large-scale infantry assault could break through German defenses, which had been deemed vulnerable after aerial and intelligence surveillance. The Allies hoped to exploit this by capturing key positions and creating a ripple effect that would force the Germans to retreat, thus achieving a strategic breakthrough that had been elusive since the early months of the war. The battle began with a week-long artillery bombardment of German positions, with over 1.5 million shells fired in an attempt to destroy enemy defenses and cut barbed wire. However, this bombardment failed to achieve its objectives, leaving much of the German defenses intact. When British and French infantry finally went over the top on July 1st, they were met with devastating machine gun fire. The result was the bloodiest day in British military history, with 57,000 British casualties, including nearly 20,000 deceased. As the battle progressed, it became a grueling war of attrition. The initial hopes for a quick breakthrough faded, and the offensive became a series of bloody, incremental gains. The Battle of the Somme is also noted for the first use of the tank in warfare. On September 15th, the British deployed 49 tanks to break through German lines. Although their impact was limited, many broke down or were easily targeted, they represented a significant innovation in military technology and tactics. By the time the battle concluded in November, the toll was staggering. The British and French forces had advanced only about six miles at the most incredible depth of penetration at the cost of over 600,000 casualties. German casualties were slightly less, but still immense, estimated at around 450,000. The Somme did little to change the strategic situation on the Western Front. Still, it demonstrated trench warfare's futility and the war's tremendous human cost. The Battle of the Somme remains deeply etched in the collective memory of the participating nations. It exemplifies the brutality of World War I and the human capacity for endurance and suffering. The battle's legacy is not just in the vast numbers of dead and wounded, but in the way it symbolizes the tragedy of war. It challenged pre-war notions of glory and heroism, replacing them with a stark realism about the horrors of modern industrial warfare. As the Battle of the Somme raged in the north, another monumental struggle unfolded in northeastern France, the Battle of Verdun. In 1916, the Battle of Verdun emerged as one of World War I's most brutal encounters. In northeastern France, this prolonged conflict symbolized the war's relentless attrition. Verdun's landscape, marred by continuous artillery barrages, turned into a hellish maze of trenches and shell craters. 
French and German soldiers trapped in this nightmarish setting faced a relentless onslaught, battling not just each other but the very elements. As the battle dragged on, it stood as a stark reminder of the grueling nature of trench warfare, with each side enduring unimaginable hardships in a desperate fight for survival. This battle wasn't just a clash of armies, but an enduring testament to human resilience in the face of relentless adversity. The Battle of Verdun began with a massive German offensive. Verdun, located on the Meuse River, was chosen by the German High Command, led by Chief of Staff Erich von Falkenhayn, for its symbolic value to France and its strategic position. Falkenhayn's plan, codenamed Operation Gerrit, Judgment, aimed to bleed France white by targeting a location he believed the French would defend at all costs due to its historical significance and fortifications. This battle was not about gaining territory, but destroying the enemy's forces. Verdun was protected by a ring of forts, the most notable being Fort Douaumont and Fort Vaux. The Germans believed a concentrated surprise attack could capture Verdun before the French had time to reinforce it. The initial bombardment and infantry assault quickly led to the capture of Fort Douaumont, delivering a psychological blow to the French and setting the tone for the following months of fighting. Under the command of Generals Philippe Pétain, later Marshal Pétain, and Robert Nivelle, the French army adopted a strategy of determined defense and counterattacks. The French supply line, known as the Voie Sacrée, Sacred Way, became a lifeline, keeping the defenders supplied with men, munitions, and equipment. The battle transformed into a war of attrition, with both sides enduring massive casualties under constant artillery bombardment and in bloody hand-to-hand -hand combat. The conditions for soldiers at Verdun were hellish. The battlefield, churned by millions of shells, became a lunar landscape of craters, mud, and barbed wire. Soldiers lived in constant fear of artillery barrages, gas attacks, and the ordeal of going over the top to face machine gun fire. The battle also saw the use of flamethrowers and poison gas, adding new horrors to the already brutal combat. Estimates of the casualties at Verdun vary, with both French and German losses believed to be in the hundreds of thousands. The French suffered approximately 377,000 casualties, while the Germans incurred about 337,000. The battle did not result in a decisive victory for either side. Still, the French managed to hold on to Verdun, and by the end of the year, they had recaptured much of the ground lost in the early days of the battle. The Battle of Verdun symbolized France's national unity and determination. The phrase, Ils ne passeront pas, they shall not pass, attributed to General Pétain, encapsulated the French resolve. Verdun remains emblematic of the futility and horror of war showcasing the limits of human endurance and the devastating impact of industrialized warfare. The battle's legacy is also preserved in the numerous monuments and cemeteries around Verdun, serving as a reminder of the cost of war and the importance of peace. Verdun, alongside the Somme, illustrates the broader tragedy of World War I, where strategic stalemates and attritional strategies resulted in the loss of millions of lives for gains that were often temporary or symbolic. These battles, with their mix of heroism, tragedy, and futility, continue to shape our understanding of World War I and the human capacity for both endurance and suffering in the face of unimaginable adversity. The tumultuous year of 1916 beckons us to pause and reflect as we stand in the long shadows cast by the battles of the Somme and Verdun. This year witnessed unparalleled sacrifice and showcased the stark realities of human conflict. These battles, emblematic of World War I's brutal attrition warfare, offer more than just historical accounts, they serve as profound lessons on the cost of war, the resilience of the human spirit, and the critical importance of peace. The Somme and Verdun are not just merely locations on a map or entries in a history book. They are poignant reminders of the lives lost, the dreams deferred, and the landscapes altered forever by the ravages of war. The unimaginable scale of casualties and the physical and psychological scars borne by survivors challenge us to confront the true face of war, stripped of its veneer of glory and heroism. The enduring legacy of the Somme and Verdun urges us to reflect on our collective responsibility to foster peace and reconciliation. In a world where the drums of war still beat, the lessons of 1916 are as relevant as ever. They serve as a stark reminder of the consequences when diplomacy fails and conflict ensues, urging us to advocate for peaceful resolutions and to remember the heavy price of war. As we commemorate these monumental battles, let us also recommit ourselves to the pursuit of peace. Let the stories of Verdun and the Somme inspire us to cherish and defend peace, recognizing that it is not merely the absence of war, but the presence of justice, dialogue, and mutual understanding. By honoring the past, we affirm our hope for a future where such sacrifices are no longer necessary. 
Peace is the lasting legacy of those who lived, fought, and died in the shadow of Verdun and the Somme.